What do we want? What do we want? When do we want it? When do we want it? When do we want it? Oh, when do we want it? Oh, when do we want it? Oh, stop the violence now! Oh, stop the violence now! Stop the violence now! Oh, 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 what do we want? What do we want? When do we want it? When do we want it? Oh, when do we want it? Oh, when do we want it? Oh, stop the violence now! Oh, stop the violence now! Oh, stop the violence now! Stop the violence now! What do we want? What do we want? When do we want it? When do we want it? Make some noise! Good afternoon again, brothers and sisters. I just want to start this off right, by, by setting the temperature of what we're doing here today. Now, I am by no means, especially since there's press here, I am not condoning crime or violence. But I'm going to share a little bit of my story. Right? I, I grew up in Queensbridge Projects in Long Island City, right? the largest public housing projects in the country. And I can tell you this, when I was eight years old and I was walking back from the bus stop and I went into the supermarket and I took a box of those animal crackers, you know, the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus box, right, for anybody that's my age, like my man right here. I put that box of animal crackers in my book bag and I left the store. And from that point forward, I knew that being hungry was a choice and that I could do something about it. And it may not have been something positive, but the way we were growing up on 68.50 every two weeks with $110 of food stamps, it wasn't cutting it. And it was embedded in my mind that there was a way for me to make sure that I didn't go hungry and it was stealing. Right, and I'm not proud of that. And I'm not proud of the life that I lived before I got to Local 79. But I can tell you, Local 79 has changed my life. Yay! And not only, not only has Local 79 changed my life, it's changed the lives of my kids. It's changed the lives of my kids' kids, because I'm a grandfather today. And it has put me in a position where I get to go back to the neighborhood that I was raised and I get to go help people like me, right? That may not look like me, but the people that I was raised with, my people, and help them come out of that. So when we talk about changing someone's life, I want you to know there's a ripple effect. One person's life can affect hundreds of other people's lives. And I'm gonna bring up a few people today that are gonna tell their story. I'm not gonna tell anybody else's story, right? But I can tell you this, I know what it's like to be incarcerated. I know what it's like to be poor. I know what it's like to be on welfare as an adult. But I don't know what it's like to be black or brown, because I'm white. And as rough as my life was growing up, I knew that it was different the way I was treated than the way my friends were treated. And that's something that I've acknowledged and I'm aware of. And that's why I'm so proud as we stand in front of the Hip Hop Museum where we highlight pioneers of hip hop because I am a member of a local union that is pioneering the change in construction in New York City. Now I'm going to bring up someone that, I, I, I feel like I grew up with him, but I didn't. We met about a year ago. 
But I really feel like we grew up together because that's the bond that we have. I'm going to bring up my brother, John Simmons. Local 79, let me hear a scream. Hey! I want to tell y'all this, and this is real serious. So I, I'm one of those brown people that Bernard was talking about. And I did a lot of time in and out of the penitentiaries. My last time I was in the penitentiary before I came home five years ago, I got that phone call that every parent regrets to get. I got that phone call and I went down to the chaplain's office and they told me I lost my son to gun violence. I say that to say, brothers and sisters, we gotta stop shooting and start booting. We gotta start lacing up our boots and going to work and putting the guns down. I know that good jobs, good jobs, changes thought patterns and processes. When we give our youth good jobs, they put the guns down. They go to work. They feel good about going to work with a job with fair wages, health insurance, a pension, something that they can depend on and give their families a life. I also want to say, I used to say I was a victim. Today I'm a survivor. I tell you why I'm a survivor. Because I survived the penitentiary. I'm a home now. Jail is not a thought. Incarceration is never a thought again because I got that good job with good benefits. I worked for a body shop. And let me tell y'all something about a body shop. When I came home, my first job was with a body shop. And every single day that I worked for a body shop, I thought about going back to jail. Every single day that I worked for a body shop, I thought about getting an extra dollar to make an make in me, to make an extra dollar to take care of myself and my family. Let me tell you, good jobs create good habits, create good thoughts, create good sports. Brothers and sisters, let's help out. Let's be a part of putting the guns down. Stop shooting. Start booting. Thank you. For those of you who haven't heard the term body shop or are unsure where the body shop is, it's not an auto body shop. Right? It, it's an unregulated organization that operates in the shadows in New York City and they exploit predominantly the formerly incarcerated black and brown residents of this city. Some of them receive over $50 an hour for the worker that they sent to the job, but the worker gets 15 or 16. And currently there's a bill right now that the council member from this area, Diana Ayala, has introduced. We have 24 sponsors, right Carla? We have 24 sponsors, right? We need two more for the majority. We have a hearing without a date in September, and we're looking to regulate these body shops. We want them to be exposed for what they're doing. Because we believe, right, that there are developers in New York City, right, that are operating under a dirty little secret. And that secret is that they're exploiting the residents of New York City. That's what a body shop is, guys. Next up, th this guy's my brother. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it, but he was volunteering one day. We just started talking, you know, like we do. How you doing? Where you from? And long story short, he's my childhood best friend's cousin, right? We didn't know. And then we just started talking and it's just such a small world. It's really good to see him. My brother, Justice Favor.
So I wore, I wore my hat, my shirt, you know, my hometown, Far Rockaway, you know? <laughs> and um, not many of us had any options to make it out. Most of my friends, most people I know, is either we was either people died, they was in prison, or they was on some form of drug. All of my friends, all of my friends, we all came from dysfunction, some type of dysfunctional family, broken homes, probably knew one friend that came from two family homes. You know, so some of the story that most of us can identify with. Um, so for me, just being able to be in this union, which enabled me to be this vehicle to allow me to break generational curses that's been plagued in my family and my community. We, I dealt with some destruction. I dealt with some things that wasn't, I'm not too happy about. But now I'm in a position to be able to effectuate change and to be able to change the lives of people that's in my union and people that's in my community. You know, I know when I went into a store and I stole, I was hungry. But if I had some economic gains, I wouldn't steal. But we all know and understand that in order to eradicate crime, in order to eradicate poverty, that the union is the real beacon for that. Do we all agree with that? Yeah. Do we all agree with that? Yeah. But I'm here to tell you today that Local 79 transformed my life, that I'm forever in debt to be able to repay this back. But what good is this if we not paying it forward? What does paying it forward look like? Building relationships with developers like l and partnering with them, lifting up a body shop worker that may not be educated about other alternatives, giving them a pathway, giving them a pathway to know that they are able to fight, that they have hope that we're gonna be there, we're gonna be the vanguard of our industry, not only in the labor movement, but also in the social justice movement that Local 79 will be on the ground working with community-based organizations, working with politicians, trying to be a part of the solution. So listen, I want everybody to just say 79 again. 79! 79! 79! Thank you, brothers and sisters. Make some noise! Make some noise! Stop the violence now! Oh, 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 stop the violence now! Stop the violence now! Alright! Make some noise! Alright, brothers and sisters. I don't want to call him out, but Ron Molis is over there. I'm not calling him up yet. Right, but he's the CEO of the development company that's doing this project here, right? And the reason I wanted to draw his attention to the stage is that the next person I'm bringing up is someone that worked for a body shop. And only because of the partnership between LNM and Local 79 does this gentleman that I'm about to bring up have a future in construction.